Hello. Uh, the last thing we're going to consider now is the effect of um, adding a load on the frequency response of our amplifier. And uh, we have again our common emitter amplifier. We have assumed a load resistor, but we have assumed that it was um, large enough that it, it didn't load our circuit. Um, so it was 100 mega ohms, um, which was much greater than the output resistance of the amplifier, which was equal to RC approximately or 20 kilo ohms. Uh, let's see what happens if I add a load resistor that is comparable to RC, thus loading the circuit. I'm going to go ahead and modify my RL and oops, I'm going to make it equal to um, just to clearly see the effect, I'm going to make it equal to the collector resistor or 20 kilo ohms. I'm going to study the effect of adding RL equals 20 kilo ohms on circuit performance. Uh, first of all, notice that the first thing that's going to be affected is the midband gain of my amplifier. Uh, we calculated the gain as being equal to negative um, RC divided by RE, or um, collector resistance divided by emitter resistance. But once I have uh, this loading, the overall resistance seen in my uh, collector is actually the parallel combination of RC and RL. And in this particular case, I can no longer ignore RL divided by RE plus RE1. So this is going to be uh, 20K in parallel with 20K divided by uh, 50 plus 150. So negative 10K divided by 200 or negative 50. So I've basically um, uh, changed the gain of my amplifier by half. The magnitude of the gate is 50 or uh, 34 dBs. All right, uh, my input resistance is going to be unaffected by the change. Uh, my output resistance, if I still consider it just to be uh, what's um, on the left hand side of the load, you know, based on the way I have labeled my circuit, I could still consider RL to be something separate from the output resistance of my amplifier. So I'm not going to recalculate that. Uh, but things that are going to be affected are some of the frequency um, response that we've calculated. So in the case of the lower cut of frequency, um, we can see that the lower cut of frequency due to CC2 is going to be affected by this change because we have just changed the seven resistance seen across the terminals of CC2. So let's recalculate that. Um, FL due to CC2 was equal to 1 over 2 pi R7 in seen across the terminals of CC2 times CC2. And this was 1 over 2 pi RC plus RL times CC2, or 1 over 2 pi 20K plus 20K uh, times 1 micro. And that gives me 3.97 hertz. So we can see that it's, um, it's uh, changed a little bit with respect to um, the prior case where we had calculated it to be um, lower than this. But in any case, it is still not dominant, uh, meaning this the uh, CPE capacitor, the bypass capacitor, still dominates uh, the low cut of frequency because the low cut of frequency due to CPE was 83.7, which is still much larger than uh, than the new FCC2. So, no changes in my lower cut of frequency. Uh, so, since FL prime, uh, or I should say, since FL due to CVE prime is still much larger than FL CC2. My FL prime still remains 83.7 hertz, unchanged. 
Uh, now let's take a look at um, the high frequency response or the um, FH value. So effect on FH. And the, um, the low resistor, it's going to have an effect on both the input capacitance as well as the um, output capacitance. The reason for that is uh, in terms of the input capacitance, if you remember, we had that Miller effect, whereas the input capacitance uh, was multiplied or the feedback capacitance, CVC, was multiplied by the gain of the circuit. Since now we've loaded the circuit, we've reduced its effective gain from 100 to 50. Um, and therefore, our Miller capacitance is going to be about half of what we calculated before as well. So let's go ahead and recalculate that. Uh, so I had FHI was equal to 1 over 2 pi, the Thevenin resistance seen across the terminals of the input capacitance, which I labeled our Thevenin input um, times the input capacitance. The Thevenin resistance seen across the terminals of the input capacitance hasn't changed uh, because we are dealing with the input and we've just changed one of the resistances at the output, um, our load. However, the value for CI has changed. My new CI, um, CI is now equal to um, CBE plus my Miller input capacitance. CBE hasn't changed, it's still 8 picofarads, but my input Miller capacitance was CBC times uh, 1 minus the gain of the circuit, and since my gain has been reduced by half, I expect my Miller capacitance will have followed suit. Uh, so CBE was 8 picofarads plus uh, 4 picofarads times 51, which is around 208 picofarads. Or just to be a little bit more precise, 212 picofarads. And if I enter that into my expression, I have 1 divided by 2 pi. Again, same 7 in resistance as before, which was 900 times 212 picofarads. And this is now around 850 kilohertz. So basically, I've increased the bandwidth of my amplifier, uh, which seems reasonable. What was limiting that bandwidth um, was the fact that I had a large gain and therefore a high Miller capacitance. Um, and now I've reduced my effective gain by half, uh, therefore reducing my Miller input capacitance by half, which has almost doubled uh, the bandwidth of my circuit. It used to be 430 something, now it's around 150 kilohertz. Uh, let's look and see what possible effects this uh, change in load had on the output, um, the the high imp the high cutoff frequency due to the output capacitance FHO, one over two pi resistance, seven in resistance connected to the output capacitance times the output capacitance. In this case, the value of the output capacitance has not changed. Um, it remains CBC, uh, CBC. The value of my output 7 resistance has changed because now the resistance connected to that output capacitance um, has an RL term, which used to be 100K, now it's 20K, so that should bring this resistance down. Um, and we recalculate our new R theta across the output capacitance is going to be equal to RC in parallel with little rho in parallel with RL, which is 20K parallel with 200K in parallel with 20K. Um, and so it's approximately equal to 10K now, so half of what it was before. If I enter this into my expression, 10K times, and my output resistance was still equal to 8 picofarads, or excuse me, 4 picofarads. And this is equal to 3.9 megahertz. So again, we've uh, shifted this frequency farther to the right, uh, which makes sense because we have decreased that resistance and therefore the value of 
And if we decrease a quantity in the denominator, then the value of the frequency will go up. Um, the only thing that is left uh, to be studied is the effect of adding a uh, load capacitance in the circuit. And I'm going to just go ahead and do it uh, right here. I'm going to add a load capacitor. CL. And I'm going to assume that it is something fairly large, just so we can see, clearly see the effect. I'm going to assume 50 picofarads. All right, I'm going to modify this and say, oops. The effect of adding a resistor and CL equals 50 picofarads on circuit performance. Now, all these other calculations will remain the same, meaning the load capacitance is not going to alter the gain of the circuit because for purposes of the gain, we are assuming that capacitance to be an open circuit. Um, it's not going to affect uh, the low cutoff frequency um, or the input high cutoff frequency, but it will affect the output high cutoff frequency. Um, basically, our new output capacitance will be 4 picofarads in parallel with 50 picofarads or 54 picofarads. I'm just going to make that substitution here. And our new, I'm going to write down that expression. Our C out now is going to be um, CBC plus CL or pico plus 50 pico or 54 picofarads. Our new cutoff frequency is now 295 kilohertz. So we can see that the dominant high cutoff frequency is now the one due to the output. And so we can recalculate that. Our FH prime is now equal to FHO. And I will have to make that modification here and make it 295 kilohertz. And that concludes our study of uh, making some circuit modifications on the frequency response. Thank you.